we've mm-hmm. also got another team going in the DFW. They'll get their exhibition going, their preseason game, one and only. And, of course, it'll feature uh, a big name in Kalen Clark. So we've got a bigger name, the head coach of your Dallas Wings, Latricia Trammell, hey. on the DM Leasing Hotline. Coach, coach Trammell. LT, coach Trammell. how you doing this evening? Hey. What's going on, gentlemen? How are you? I'm doing quite well. Mm-hmm. I'm doing even better now that I get to talk to you. I don't know if you recall well, last year now. when we had an opportunity <laughs> to talk to you. You were, you were in the midst of a, of a team gathering. Did we catch you in a similar time? No, you are absolutely perfect, and I just want to say thank you for having me. Oh, we always appreciate getting a chance to talk to you. I mean, it it is a fun time all the way around the W right now, especially with all of the buzz. I'm really interested from your perspective as you've been around this as a head coach, as an assistant all the way around. how How do players that have been in the league, particularly veteran players, how do they handle a young player, particularly with Buzz, not to put anybody's name out here. In, I'll especially. put two, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. <laughs> but, like, I, I, there's been a lot of talk, especially from folks like DT, you know, Diana Taurasi, about, sure. like, the, the you know, the target that might be on Caitlin's back. Like, how have you seen players kind of, uh, you know, handle that type of circumstance? You know, that's a great question. And, I you know, I think all the, the players are – excited about what she has brought to women's basketball. I mean, you got to give the young lady credit because she is a incredible talent. But also there's, you know, that part of, you know, welcome to the WNBA. And I think she's going to transition fine. But, again, I, I think these veteran players are excited uh, to play against her and, uh, you know, try to, again, make her do something different. Because the physicality is different. The scouting is different. Mm -hmm. And so we're excited to see her tomorrow night. That's why we're so glad we have you on because, again – uh, it's like any league, any professional sport. You got to earn it. You just, you just don't get yeah, to do. get a pass. But the yeah. benefits are for all the players. I kind of looked at it like you tell me what you think. I kind of looked at it like when Tiger Woods turned pro back in the day. Mm, it made yeah. everybody rich. Yeah, you're right, and that's something that she has done. Think about, you know, we have our, as you mentioned, our exhibition game. I call it our glorified scrimmage. You know, <laughs> tomorrow night mm-hmm. we are sold out. Woo! I mean, there is not an open seat in the house, and that's absolutely incredible. But just the buzz around women's basketball right now, you know, our first game, May 15th, sold out. And so it's just an exciting time for all of us and to see how our grow our game has grown and the support for women's sports is, is absolutely fantastic. And, Coach, I mean, we're talking to Coach Latricia Trammell, the head coach of the Dallas Wings here on 105 Through the Fan. Coach, the buzz is also great at that building because of what you've done over this past season. A fantastic year, and you talk about growth. I don't know that there's a person that you can talk about that exemplifies that more than Satu Sabali. Um, I understand oh, yeah. that she's out for this game with the shoulder. Like, Do we have an update on where she is in her recovery? You know, that one thing about Satu, uh, she was competing in Germany uh, to twi- try to qualify for the Olympics, which they did. Mm-hmm. Uh, she did have a shoulder injury she had surgery and uh, she is rehabbing I mean she's attended practice you know staying locked in and connected to our our team hopefully we'll have her back uh, around that Olympic break so she's going to be out for a while unfortunately okay well with her being out for a while I mean that's another uh, I guess one fewer of those core players that you really depended on a lot this year Who are you looking at to maybe add in, obviously, to help with Satu's place? But also, I imagine you don't want to be as shallow as it seemed like you had to be at times. One of those names, I imagine, is probably Lou Lopez Senegal, right? You know, yeah. And she just returned yesterday, or late last night, I should say, uh, coming back from overseas playing. Uh, So she's going through all of her testing right now. Not sure if she will play tomorrow uh, since she just returned. late last night uh but yeah where i'm looking forward to actually seeing her on the court since we have you on the show would it be yeah. nice to talk about your draft picks we talked about caitlin clark we mentioned angel reese let's talk about the the draft picks that the wings got yeah and i, yeah. I can i start with uh, jc sheldon the first of your first round picks obviously a, a, a what seems to be like a three and d guard like what's a fair expectation for her in a first season understanding this is a team that could use a little shooting gentlemen let me tell you something That young lady has been doing absolutely fantastic in practice. I mean, she has already gained respect from our veterans. And when she steps on the floor, which has been a great surprise, even for me, I knew she was good. I know she's confident. 
but she's coming on the court like she's been here for several years. I mean, she is trying to compete and earn a spot, but not only that, she's just a great teammate. The players love her, and I thought she had quick feet. She has even quicker hands and being able to score at multiple levels, handle the ball at the point guard position uh, under pressure. I mean, I have been majorly impressed. Now, Coach, this is your second season as a head coach of the Dallas Wings, your second season as a head coach in the W. What did you learn yes. from your uh, first endeavor in the W as a head coach? You know, one of the things, you know, I always tell people this, too. When I first got in the league, someone came up to me and said, no, listen, uh, do, it's not about relationships here. You've got to go in. It's a business. Go in, do your job, and get out cause, because players will come and go. I am so glad that I did not take that advice. <laughs> yeah. You know, I stayed true to myself. It is bigger than basketball, and I, I do want to build that connection and relationships with my players, which I think, you know, I've done since day one of training camp. But also just, you know, if we think about a growth, I'm one that will always evaluate you know, after seasons, what can I enhance? Because we always ask that of the players. And, you know, one of the things is just time management. I think at the beginning of training camp, I was just trying to put so much in in a short amount of time. you got to remember, we've had four practices. Mm -hmm. And so um, time management for me. But it, like I said, I, I'm staying true to myself. And, you know, we're competing. We're having fun. But more importantly, I mean, we're playing to win no matter what drill we're in. You know, Coach, I'm so glad we have you on the show as well. And I don't know how much you can talk about this, but I'm sure there's a lot of mixed emotions with the quote-unquote good news of the growth of the Dallas Wings actually moving to Dallas. And yeah. I, I say the mixed emotions because from the time you guys came here from Tulsa, home has been Arlington, mm -hmm. and that venue, the college park, is just beautiful. But the situation in Dallas, there's so much upside. So I'm sure – you know, a lot of people are torn. So give us your perspective or how you feel about it. Yeah, I, I, I get it. And I know that, you know, our fans are absolutely amazing. I mean, they have that, have CPC rocking for us. I mean, they're definitely that sixth person in the stands for us, and they bring a lot of energy. And UTA has been fantastic. CPC has been fantastic for us. Uh, but it goes back to what Greg Bibb said, our CEO and president and, and partner, is Dallas wanted us. You know, it's always like, it, you know, when they first moved here uh, from Tulsa, they were always trying to find people to take us, he mm -hmm. said. And so for Dallas to reach out and say, hey, we want you here. We're going to give you your own arena, practice facilities. I mean, it, it's absolutely amazing. The players are excited about it. And I think that's the growth, right? And that's the investment that we're seeing. And, and we're excited about it. We're going to miss CPC. We're going to miss UTA. Uh, but again, uh, Dallas will be an amazing experience for our players. Still talking to Dallas Wings head coach Latricia Trammell here on 105.3 The Fan. And coach, I mean, this was a team that, as we mentioned, a very good season last year. Uh, what, what are... Are there any play style improvements or changes that you're anticipating? Like, what is the perspective going into this year from a tactical standpoint? Yeah, you know, right now, you know, with training camp going on, we've got to, obviously, the toughest part of the job is get to that final roster. And we only have one preseason game tomorrow night against Indiana, and uh, we'll have to make cuts after that. Mm. Um, but with that said, these players are competing for a roster spot. They want to be a part of the Dallas Wings family. I, I couldn't ask for a better group of, of players uh, in our training camp right now, but it's always to win. You're right. We had an incredible season last year. We checked all the boxes that we set out to accomplish day one, and now we're just trying to enhance that. And it's the ultimate goal is to win a championship. Most definitely. Um Speaking of winning your championship, the Dallas Mavericks, again, are, are playing the same night that you guys are tomorrow on your exhibition, but Caitlin Clark's in town and it's sold out. <laughs> I know you've got a great relationship with the Dallas Mavericks. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because, I mean, I, they've put their arms around you guys, and you guys have done the same. I've seen a lot of Dallas Wings players and yourself at Maverick Games before, so it's just I just think it's a, a great opportunity on, on both, both sides, but I just want to know your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, we have a great partnership. I mean, obviously, a lot of respect. I have attended. They've always opened their doors. One, I've attended their training camp 
uh, prior to season. Uh, but just that partnership uh, that we have with them and the support that we have. I mean, you want that with your NBA team. And they, you're right. They come to our games. We're trying to right now figure out a way to get our entire team to one of their games to support. And oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think just being in, in Dallas, you know, a little bit closer in 2026 will help. But, you know, starting the gym program uh, with uh, the Mavericks and sharing that partnership, uh, it, it's exciting. The players love it. They're all good friends. They stay connected, and it's really extended family. Yeah, and speaking of that extended family, like it comes through in a lot of different ways. And even just with your team, I think that you've cultivated a great familial, um, you know, atmosphere. I saw in one of the Wings social media posts that Maddie Segrist apparently won a shooting contest. What what, what has her development looked like, and what are you looking forward to for her in the twenty twenty four season? Yeah, you know, that one of the things is the start you know, the start of this season, you know, I have individual meetings with each players and I'm expecting Maddie to take a, a bigger step, you know, bigger row, especially with Sod two out and she's a competitive she'll do whatever we ask of her. And well no matter what role she has this season, she's gonna be a star in it. And uh, she had a little procedure done on her knee, you know, this past season which a lot of people didn't know about. And so she rehabbed it. She actually played AU this uh, winter in, in Dallas, which was absolutely great for her and her development. And like I said, she's going to do some big things for us this season. Now, Coach, before we let you go, I couldn't you know, pass on the opportunity to ask you about someone who I think is widely regarded as one of the greatest players in the W. You, you crossed paths a little bit in L.A., with um with Candace Parker who earlier this ah, week yes. announced that she'd be retiring. Yeah. What what was your relationship? Like what what did you see from her and your time with her? Well, you're not gonna believe I was texting with her right before I got on this call. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> yeah, so That's actually great. A incredible relationship with her. I mean, I I mean she is to me a goat. And what she has done for women's basketball is absolutely amazing. I mean, first player to dunk. I mean, we could just go on and on. I mean, she mm -hmm. has every accolade that you could absolutely ask for in, in a in an athlete. Uh, but she's more importantly, she's a great wife. She's a great mother um, and a great person. And so that is one young lady that I've always stayed connected with. We've been close. You know, I was in charge of the defensive part when I was in L.A. Um, when we were in the, the, we called it the Wubble, which is the bubble. And uh, her and I got extremely close there when she won Defensive Player of the Year. And we, I taught her daughter how to fish. And so I, I, that's my family. And so we, we will always stay connected. Hey, before you get out of here, I got to ask you this, Coach Trammell. Who was your favorite player of all time growing Come on up? Now. Come on. That's a hard one. <laughs> no, not, not who you think is the greatest, but your favorite. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's so many. Yeah, they do so many different things. Uh, well, you know, there we have a defensive call, you know, for Tina Thompson. Cause mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's, I could probably pull a lot of different players out for specific reasons, just like you said. Uh, I think for me, honestly, growing up with three older brothers and knowing two out of the three played college basketball, one coached for over 30 years on the men's side, and – I think for me, it was just really admiring the coaches because that's something I've always – I don't okay. ever remember ever wanting to do something else. So I, you know, go back to the Pat Summit days. There you, you know, go. And, oh, yeah. And, and just seeing people that kind of went through that journey because mm -hmm. I coached at every level but two. And so just seeing it, you know, they always say if you, you, if you see it, you can be it. Yeah. And so I think just seeing those coaches that went from high school and – then made it to the college level, then college level to the professional level. Uh, it just gave me gave me hope, honestly. In addition to all of the DFW sports, tomorrow evening, 7 p.m., Fever will be at the College Park Center versus the Wings. If you don't already have tickets, good luck getting it to see one of the most fun teams in the Metroplex, the Dallas Wings. Coach, always appreciate you giving us a little bit of time. It's always a pleasure. Coach Trembo. Listen, I appreciate you guys, and I hope to see you soon. For sure. Absolutely, you will. Uh, hopefully right behind the bench, uh, as I always Come love on. to do. <laughs> You're always welcome.